Hey, here and play people, this is Jermaine Griggs. Welcome to another video of mine. I know it's been a while. I think it was like November when I last did some videos. So uh, I know a few of you guys have missed those videos. I'm back with, you know, another cool video and I'll explain what I'm gonna talk about in this video in a little bit, but we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty and I'm gonna show you something. By the end of this video, I promise you will walk away with a new skill. Um, that is, if you don't already know, if you don't already have this skill, you're going to walk away with a new skill by the end of this video. I don't know how long it's going to be, to tell you the truth. I never plan these things out. I don't have an outline. Do I have an outline? No. I don't even have. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about next. You know, God just kind of gives it to me as we, as we go, and, and one thing leads to another. I mean, I know what I'm going to talk about, but I don't really have it scripted. So, you know, I figured a lot of emails have come in, and I've been crazy busy. So I apologize if you haven't seen me in a while. Uh, you know, on the videos and stuff like that. The Gospel Music Training Center and some of our other things have kept us pretty busy. But I, I thought to stop for a second and really, you know, I want to do a video for everybody, regardless of whether you're a paid member or not. You know, I want to be able to help you this week. And so I said, what is something that people playing by ear could benefit from? What is something everybody needs to know how to do? I know we got jazz folks over here, gospel folks over here, maybe even some classical blues and everything in between. But what is everybody that plays by ear? What do they eventually need to know how to do if they're going to do this thing on their own? And that thing is picking out the key to a song. That is the number one thing. That is the foundation. If you can't pick the key out to a song, then you're lost. You've already started on the wrong foot. And if you're reading sheet music, you don't have to worry about this. If you're reading sheet music, the key signature is there. If you see one flat, you're in the key of F. You know that. If it, the key signature changes um, to two flats, you know you're in the key of B flat, right? On the other end, if it's a sharp, you know you're in G. Well, we don't have that. We don't have that. A point of reference when we're playing by ear. You either got two things. You, you got your ear to rely on totally, and a lot of my people rely on their ear fully. Don't even know the theory. They just they just know. They, it's intuitive. They they hear the chords, and they, they're able to hear that common tone throughout the song. And that's the key that you're in, that common tone that you can almost hum over anything. And then other people look at it analytically. They hear minor chords, and they say, hmm, that sounds like it's on the second tone of the scale. And then they figure out what major key has minor chords on its second tone of the scale, and they kind of piece it together analytically. I'm going to try to give you a little bit of both. Uh, in this video lesson here, okay? So how to find the key to a song. And I'm actually gonna take you on my computer, that's why I have my computer on, I'm gonna take you to YouTube, and uh, we're actually gonna go through a few songs. I got a few of my favorites, like Lord I Lift Your Name on High, uh, Israel's Friend of God, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. Y'all don't talk about Michael, I love Man in the Mirror. I put that on in the car, and it just makes me just wanna give up everything, and I, I don't know, it just, Man in the Mirror is a very strong uh, song. Uh, R. Kelly, The World's Greatest, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, Elton John's version, Silver and Gold by Kerr Franklin, Dad, You're My Hero, that's some Whitney Houston, some Norman Hutchins. I'm not teaching you the songs, but we're going to go through each one, and we're going to try to pick out the keys. And I'm going to let you try it first, and then I'm going to provide you with an answer and hopefully some kind of analysis of it, you know, what we're doing here. Okay, so the first tip is this. When you're trying to figure out the key to a song, there is going to be one tone that is going to stand out more than others. I call this the common tone. You can call this the home base tone. You can call this the tone of rest. You can call this the tonic. You can call this the keynote, the key that you're in. It's this common tone, and, uh, and, and it's something that you can hum over everything. It, it, like if Mary had a little lamb, the key is hmm. Even though I started on man, that's not my key. You know, that this happens to be the first note of the melody, but you have to be good at distinguishing, hmm, is that just a passing or neighboring tone or a melody note, or is that the key that we're in? And so I'm going to help you with that today. It's this key that you could hum over the entire thing, okay? So, and I'm not a singer. I always, I know you guys be laughing when I be singing, and I do it on purpose. I like to get laughs from people and stuff. I like to say I can't sing, you know, it kind of indolent. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But anyway. You know, if I sung, Mary, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, Mary had a little lamb, fleece was white as snow, you're looking for a common tone. Now, sometimes it can be the first and the last chord that you hear, the keynote of those chords. So her fleece was white as snow, mm, that would be a good indication. Not all songs 
end and begin on the first tones. Not all of them do that. Not all songs begin and end on the first chord either. Like the wheels on the bus, if you were going after the, you'd be wrong. That's not the key. That's just a lead in note. You know, it's like a pickup, if you will. It's the fifth tone, but that's not the key that you're in. The wheels, hmm, wheels would be the note. So it's almost you have to be good at that too. And so let's practice actually this common note because I can talk about it all I want, but you have to kind of hear it. You kind of got to see what I'm talking about, you know? And I want you to try out the first one and I'm gonna give you some tricks because in music there's 12 notes. So it's not like the lotto where you got one in like 500 million chance in winning or 200 million or 100 million or whatever the odds are. Um, in music you just have one out of 12 chance. That's a really big probability actually. You know, that's not that bad. One in 12 and if it's not one, it's the other. So even if you get in the ballpark and start fishing around, you should be able to figure out the key. It's just a matter of is that the right key? Do you have 100% full confidence that that's the key that you're hitting? So let's actually look at a few songs and I want you to try to just hum what you think that key was. If, if you were to go to the end of the song in your mind and if you were at a concert and, and you were in the audience and you had to clap, you were going to win a million dollars if you clapped at the end of the song. Not seconds before, not seconds after, waiting to see if it's the end of the song, but you had to clap right when you thought it was the end of the song to win a million dollars and you had to clap where you thought that was a nice ending chord. That's usually the key that you're in. That's that moment of rest. That's that moment when you feel at home. That's the key you're in. So try to listen for that. Now, you know, when you're in the beginning of the song, it's kind of hard to think of that moment of rest. But in songs, you're going to find that they're going to give you moments of rest in the song. A song can't be tension, 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 tension. There has to be some release, right? Usually the release are those moments of rest. That's the key that you're in, okay? So... Everything is, is tension, release, tension and release. Think about when you're watching movies and listening to music and anything in life. There's some tension, build up tension, and right at the right moment, there's that release. You need to know when things are at a, a moment of calmness or a state of, I don't know, normality. I'm making up stuff. I like those big words, make me sound all good and stuff. So let's listen for a moment of rest and you hum it first. Don't worry about this piano yet. Get it in this, get it in this mind, and then we'll take it to the piano, okay? Let, let's see what we got here. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I don't know what version I got. There's so many versions. I'm so glad you're in my life. Are, are you humming the note? Are you humming the note? I'm so glad you came to save us. That's the note you should hum. And if you're like me, you might first hum something wrong and you have to adjust up. I'm, I do that all the time. Don't worry about that. Even if you go, mm, it's fine. As long as you get to what you believe is the note. So the note that I'm humming is, mm. now some of you guys might be humming, mm. you may have heard that last chord. Lord, I lift your name on high. That's not the key. And I, the, the, this whole thing is about understanding what is the real moment of rest and what is a, a either tension or a temporary moment of rest. It's the Lord, hmm, Lord, I lift your name on high. Hmm, listen again. Hmm. That chord. I don't know what version I got. Is this the right version y'all got me, Jay? That's, that's not the right version, huh? It's a lot, it's a lot of different. Yeah, I, I didn't listen to the whole, I was like, Lord, I love your name, we're we going with that one. So, um, I know there's a more calmer, you know, worshipy kind of one, but I don't know, let's go with what we got. And I'm gonna give you a trick, actually, because what I find is that if you're in the ballpark, now if you ain't in the ballpark, you tone deaf, but if you're in the ballpark, you're either humming the tone you're supposed to hum, the third of the tone you're supposed to hum, or the fifth of the tone you're supposed to hum. 
Okay, so let's just say the tone you were supposed to hum is C. Let's just say, well, we don't know yet. Okay, we're gonna go to our piano and figure out what I was just humming. But just for the, the right now, a moment of simplicity, say the note you were supposed to hum is C. Now what I find is that most people are humming either E, if they're humming something wrong, they're humming E, which is the third tone of C, C, D, E, and I don't know if I'm singing that in C either, but they're either humming, they're humming the third tone of C or they're humming the fifth tone of C, which is G. So, and in this song, had, if, the, if, the, if the tone really is C, some of you guys are humming the third tone, let's say if it was E, you're, or some of you are humming that fifth tone, which is, Lord, I lift your name on high. Some of you guys are humming, hmm, and that's accidentally. Okay, you're not supposed to, and I'm gonna give you a trick um, to make you uh, not have those fallacies or have those mistakes. So stick with me, I have a trick for you. So let's hum it one more time, and then we're gonna bring it to the piano. I'll tell you how to match up your voice with the piano. You guys didn't tell me my lips was ashy. I just licked my lips. I hope it turns out right on, on the camera. Just know I didn't know. Just don't fault it to me. Fault it to my, my passion to teach and not care what I look like on the piano. Okay, so. Now what I do, and I just, let me make sure I'm still humming that right. And high, that was an indication. That was one of those release points, right? Okay, so now with me, or what I teach is just start at middle C. Just start at C and work your way up to And as you get closer and closer, it's gonna feel like a roller coaster. You hear that? We're right on point, aren't we? Now we started at C, now, now this, until you get your voice to match your piano. Now, okay, is it in A flat? Now let's go back and now let's press this and, and let's see what we do. And I might turn up my piano a little bit to make sure you guys are hearing that. Okay, so let, let's see. You hear that? It works. I'm just hitting A flat. It works everywhere. Okay. Now, what if I would have guessed the wrong one? Okay, because some of some people may have done E flat because Lord, I lift your name on high. You know, some people will they will uh, do the wrong one because it's the last chord or something, or maybe, I don't know, that stood out to them the most. Okay, now notice if I play E flat over this entire song, it won't sound as good as A flat, okay? So a lot of this is intuitive. It, it won't sound as good, and you're gonna notice that. So let me hit E flat while we're, while we're doing it. But it's not. But A flat, ain't that? Uh huh. See, that's the key. Let's try E flat. Now, now here's why it's hard because somebody in that choir is singing an E flat. That might be the alto, uh, depending on the inversion of the chord that the choir is harmonizing. Um, that might be a tenor. So what you're doing when you're accidentally picking out the fifth of what it's supposed to be, you're picking out one of those tiny notes in the chord, but you're not picking out the key. The key is the key that we're in. We're in the key of A flat major in this song, where that is the first chord, an A flat major chord. That's what key we're in, nothing else. We may move to another key, but right now, this point in time, we're in the key of A flat, and that's what's important about this. Now here's the trick. Are you ready? Brace yourself, okay? And uh, I never seen anyone teach it 
this way. Nobody ever. So you're getting something that uh, I would normally charge a, a lot for. This could be in a $50 course. Okay, so how do you, what's an easy way, like a, um, a litmus test, if you will, to test against that common mistake of choosing the third or the fifth? Because that's, if you're in a ballpark, that's what you should be making mistakes on. I know it sounds kind of weird for me to say, if you're going to mess up, mess up this way. <laughs> you know, like sometimes I used to go to a church, a church, the pastor used to say, well, if you're going to mess up, you might as well mess up like this. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that part, but if you're going to mess up here, at least you should be messing up with the third or fifth. You shouldn't be like somewhere else. That's just ridiculous. The ear has to at least be in the ballpark. Okay, so it, here's what you do. You take the key that you're thinking. It might not be the right key, but you take the key that you're thinking. Okay, so in this case, let me turn down my piano. Like I said, this, you know, this is a very intimate lesson. I'm not trying to be perfect or anything. I'm not scripting it, but you take the key that you think. Say this key is E flat. Okay, and I'm, I'm actually gonna show you my piano on this one. Let's actually go to my piano. So E flat, let's just say, now we know in retrospect that the key is A flat, but let's just say we guess E flat. Rule number one, ask yourself what minor chord, this is, a, this is the minor chord litmus test to finding the right key. What minor chord in its regular root form puts E flat on top? Okay, what minor chord puts E flat on top? And here's a hint, since minor chords and major chords have the same notes on top uh, in root position, meaning in the regular triad form, regular one, three, five, or one flat, three, five, um, really it's whatever major chord puts that note on top is gonna be the minor chord also that puts that note on top. So what major or minor chord puts E flat on top? Well, G major puts D on top, so A flat major, you know, must put E flat on top, right? That's an A flat major chord, A flat, C, and E flat, right? Okay, but I don't want the major chord. Major may help me to figure out quickly, you know, what minor chord, because the minor chord and the major chord, they just differ. A flat major is A flat, C, E flat. A flat minor is A flat, C flat, and E flat, but, I, you know, I don't like to call that C flat, so let's call it B, right? Or you can call it G sharp uh, minor and think of this as G-sharp, B, and D-sharp. Whatever you want to do, you need to have these three notes pressed. Okay, and what you're going to do, now that you've figured out what minor chord puts this note on top, which is now we know that it's G-sharp minor, right? Or A-flat minor. Now we're going to test against these other two notes. These are going to be our test. If we pass, if this song, if, if E-flat still remains the best note, it wins. If it doesn't remain the best note, it's going to be kicked off by one of these two. Okay, that's the minor chord trick. Okay, let let's see what let's see what happens. Let's see if B works. And and if E flat is the real thing, this B shouldn't work. If E flat is the real thing, this A flat shouldn't work. And one of these should be really off. It should be no question about it. Let's see what happens. So that's the E flat. Let's test against the B. That's off. That doesn't work. Ah, did you see that though? I went to the B immediately. Oh no, we're off. That, that ain't it, Doc. That ain't it. But notice when I tested that final note of the minor chord, it was A flat. And had you not known that A flat was the key, in retrospect, that, see, that would have landed you the deal because no ear is going to pick this over this because this is just it. You might pick this because you don't know there's no other option. You might pick E flat, but you're not going to pick E flat over A flat. So you, you get that? So what's really happening? Well, when I'm testing E flat against B and A flat, I'm basically making sure I'm not choosing E accidentally as the third, or this E flat here accidentally as the third, because B, if B was the real answer, and I accidentally chose E flat, see, I'd be picking the third instead of the key I'm in. So by going to B, I'm making sure I'm not choosing this accidentally as the third. You get it? Because if you're in the B scale, this E flat or D sharp, because you're in the key of B, this D sharp would have been the third key. And remember I told you the third key is most likely, the third and the fifth tone of the scale is most likely to be mistaken. So this litmus test, even if you don't understand what it's doing, just, you know, it's basically making sure you're not choosing this accidentally as the third, okay? 
And then by the by going to the this note, this A flat in the key, you're making sure you're not accidentally choosing this as the fifth. And that's exactly what we were doing. We were accidentally looking at this. Instead of it being a tonic, we were thinking of it as the fifth. Okay, so. And then once we tested against it, once we did that litmus test, it landed us on A flat and this would have won. Okay, same thing. Let's actually go to, because some people would have accidentally guessed C. You know, Lord, I lift your name. You know, C is the third of A flat. And it could have been a guess as well for some people. You know, some people would have heard. So what do you do with C? You figure out what minor chord puts C on top, okay? Anybody have an answer? It's the same as the major chords, hint, hint. Okay, so that's A, I mean, that's F minor, okay? F minor. So think about it. Once we would have tested against this A flat, we would have won. That would have been the answer, and we wouldn't have even gone to this F. So however you look at it, it doesn't matter what note you're pressing. If you're in a ballpark, then this minor chord trick will work for you. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Once you're in the ballpark, if you apply my minor chord test, what am I talking about? The minor chord test. Whatever you think is your perspective key, test against it with the other notes of the, the minor chord that puts that note on top, okay? So rewind this if you don't get it. Some people's gonna go over your head. Some people are gonna be like, oh, that's a cool little trick there. Okay, so in closing, I'm gonna go through every other song. First hum, okay, then find the key on your hum, try to hum that common note until it clicks. Then find that key on your keyboard and then do the minor chord test to make sure, you know, nothing else works, okay? Better than what you've chosen. Okay, so let's go here. I'm a friend of God. What are you humming right now? That should have been a thing you hummed. That's what you should be humming. In your own voice. That's what you should have been humming. Okay, so let's find that on the keyboard. Okay, so it should have been E. Now some people might accidentally pick, I am a friend of God, you know, like the melody note. Some of you would have picked G sharp. Some of you would have picked, da, 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 you know. So you need to apply the minor chord test, okay? If you would have applied the minor chord test to this uh, B right here, you should have been testing against the other notes of E minor. And then so you would have tested against G, that wouldn't have worked. Eventually you would have tested E, bam, that would have been your key. For some of you guys that accidentally guessed this note, I am a friend, you know, however the melody works, you would have figured out, okay, what is the minor chord that puts this note on top? And you would have guessed uh, this C sharp minor chord right here. So you would have tested against these other two notes. And the first one you tested against right here would have been your answer. That would have got you much closer and you would have been like, whoa, this is amazing. You wouldn't even want, went to this one because this would have been totally off, okay? Well, not totally off, but it, this would have been the best. Okay, so that's in the key of E. Let's move on to the next one. This is a personal favorite of mine's right here. You should be humming something. Here's a, here's a chord of rest right here. That's a chord of rest right there. That first chord there. Okay, so now we need to figure out what that is. Na, 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 na. Don't y'all love that song? Put, post me a comment if you like that song like me. So, let me make sure I didn't lost the key. Okay, so. Um, wow, we're in the key of G. Now, did you hear that roller coaster effect that I heard? You know, I started here, and as you got closer and closer to the key, 
It was like this key right before, you couldn't rest. If you went to bed hearing that note and you're supposed to hear that note, it will haunt you because it's just pulling you to go to this G, okay? So the answer would have been G. Now some of you guys would have tried to guess B because I'm asking when I'm asking. You know, that, that note is in the melody, sure enough. The choir may sing that note too, but that's not the key. That's not the best. That's not the common note. That's not the tonic. So you would have tested, you know, you would have did the minor chord trick because E minor puts B on top. You would have tested against G. G would have worked, right? E wouldn't have worked down here. Some of you guys would have accidentally picked this D. You needed to do the minor chord trick. You would have tested against G minor because G minor puts D on top. You would have found this B flat didn't work, but this G would have took you to the promised land. So the key is G. The litmus test would have put you close. All right, let's go into the next song. This is R. Kelly, The World's Greatest. Another one of my favorites. I work out to this song, actually. One of them, at least. That's a chord of rest that you just hear right there. That's not a chord of rest. That's moving away. Right here. If you could hum that, that would have been the chord. And don't laugh at me, you know. I'm taking a big risk to be just all comfortable with you guys like this. So don't laugh. Oh man, Michael and R. Kelly is on the same playing field today. G again. So apply that same litmus test from before. It would have been the same as Man in the Mirror with Michael Jackson. You would have been good to go. So the key is G. Let's go on to the next song. You know, now that I'm a pop, I'm a pops now. I have a two-year-old, and she watches Lion King all day, all night, right? And there's a song. Now, Elton John did this one. I don't know if he's the original creator of it or whatever, but it's Can You Feel the Love Tonight. Listen to it. Very pretty song, too. You got the key yet? It's, a, it's kind of a different though. That should have been your key. That should have been your key. B flat. Now hit B flat as you're listening to it. You hear that? It works. works everywhere. You hear that? It works everywhere. And had you said D accidentally, you would have applied the minor chord trick and eventually B flat should have come up. If you accidentally said F, um, you do the same thing. You, you uh, apply the minor chord trick and eventually B flat would have came up as the answer. Okay, let's move on to the next song. A favorite of mine, one of the first songs I played in the 90s, Silver and Gold. Ta -da. One of my favorites. Nice piano. Okay, you need to be finding the key now. That ain't the key that the saxophone, he did another key. But maybe it's coming at the end. Try to listen for that chord when the choir comes in. So, you know, some are you're going to find right away because they're going to be right by C. So, that is the key right there. D flat, okay? And then... My favorites okay so and if you would have thought F apply what the minor chord trick see that would put you that would have eventually gave you D flat and D flat would have worked much better if you thought a flat another common mistake minor chord trick you know the D flat minor chord and that would have you would have tested E first that would have not worked at all then you would have tested D flat and that would have put you in the ballpark okay Dad, you're my hero. I got three more and I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. 
It's a pretty song too. Okay, and usually that's going to be the first chord that's played as well. It's not always, you know, the, that chord that, that's played right when the singer comes in, but I'd say probably 70, 80 percent of the time it is, or more. Okay, so that was F. Apply the litmus test. I'm not going to cover it again. Let's get some Whitney in here. Tyler Perry, Medea does a good <laughs> impersonation. <laughs> Now, I don't know if this is new Whitney or old Whitney. I would only be oh, I would <laughs> Now, this. So mm, one of those notes I was a tonic. Every. And I don't know, but she might change the key. Does she change or she stays on the time? She changes later. She changes the key later. But for that part. Now let's see if it works. Now, this might be in between keys. I don't know how it was recorded, but let me, let's make sure. That's about the key. And what you're going to find sometimes, though, and this is a perfect example, I don't know if this is brought from a VHS, but you'll find some keys. Don't you have this issue too, Jay? Some keys, the, uh, they'll be in between keys, so it'll be real weird from you. You know, more, it was more like uh, the cassette tapes. CDs, you don't get that problem with as much, so I don't know how this was transferred. But sometimes the cassettes, when them cassettes get old, it'll be like between A and, and A flat. Sometimes you got to take this this wheel over here on your keyboard and then kind of move it down. Oh, my wheel ain't working. <laughs> I thought I was moving. I was about to say, y'all heard that? And I, it wasn't moving. See, your ear should have told you that I wasn't moving. I was a false positive. But anyway, that's one thing to think about. And then the last song, let's take it church, church, because you need to be able to figure this out in all situations. So, Perfect ending. Come on, y'all. On the battlefield, and I'm fighting. I'm trying to say, <laughs> what's the key, you guys? <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the key is D flat. Okay, so, and then you would have done the same test. So I've spent 30 minutes trying to walk you through this step by step intimately. I even gave you a, a test so that you won't fail at this. Now, like I said, you gotta be in the ballpark. If you guess in a totally different tone, that's not even the, the third or the fifth of the key, it's kind of like your ears really off. This test works when you're in the ballpark. I'm giving you the most common mistakes, you know, and if you're making these, if, if I'm getting you down to three out of 12 keys, I'm, I'm, what this whole lesson was, if you can get it down to three, then you can get in, you can get to the, the playing field, you can win. But if you're outside, if you're guessing the opposite key, like the circle of his, if you're guessing the one way over here, you, you know, that's a problem. So, you know, basically I just wanted to release this lesson. I thought I could help you guys out. I had some extra time. Believe me, believe you me, we are back to work, um, hard work, but you know, this is the least I can do to help you guys out here in the new year. So hope you enjoyed it. Leave me your comments if you were blessed by it. And I'll see you next time. Check your email. I got some more surprises for you. Uh, you know, I got some more things planned. So take care. Remember, you can hear it, you can play it.